Are they, can you hear me? I can hear you guys. Yeah. I can't hear myself. Am I supposed to hear myself? You can't hear yourself? No, am I supposed to? Oh, can you hear yourself now? I think now I can. Yeah. You were on mute. It's on mute. All righty. It's shit. on mute, and they were talking shit about me. Folks. Are we recording? Yeah, we're recording. Ah, fuck. On. Welcome to the fucking Good Crack Podcast. We have a special treat today. This is a special treat. We've been we've been looking forward Perhaps to this one. the best treat we've ever provided for the Good Crack. <laughs> it's gonna be a audience. big letdown. We got a big letdown. We got Ryan O'Toole in the house today. Yeah, the world famous. The huh? world famous. <laughs> You've probably been brought up on the show several times, actually. Probably, yeah, yeah. We're always like, he's our favorite fucking comic working right now. <laughs> like, you think he'd sign my mic that we do the pod with? Like, uh, what's oh, going on? God. Not much, dude. How are we feeling? Good, dude. Like, I was, I had four drinks last night, and I feel like I fucking drank a keg, dude. You know, dude, we're getting, we're getting old. I can't, I can't handle it. It makes me not. I, I love drinking, especially because I think I realized it's. I like drinking a lot during certain events, you mm-hmm. know, like I love when the Patriots are playing, I love drinking like 25 beers. And then last night I was just hanging out with one of my like best friends and me, I had four drinks, four drinks. I love the level of four drinks, you know, right. I love not going past that, but I love having that nice buzz puts me right to bed. But then this morning I wake up and I'm like, fuck, I should have just fucking ate a banana or something, you know? What were you drinking? Was it, be- was it beers? I had a, I had a Magnus, uh, a shot of Jameson. A Bud Light and a Corona. Wow. Okay, so, that, that's so you were go, you were going is, full dude. Irishman to start, it but was then at, you mixed it up a bit. <laughs> it was at three different places, though. Oh, okay, okay. That's what I'm saying. Though. I, here's an equation that no one talks about that I think is something you have to come to terms with when you're 21, you make some of your own money, and you're going out to bars. When you're in high school, when you're fucking around, it's like water bottle of your parents' vodka, a 30 rack of beer. You're just getting your hands on whatever you yeah. can. College, just beer, 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 beer. Then you get to college, or then you get a little older, you turn 21, and it's like, all right, I got some walking around money, I'm going to real bars, I'm in New York, I'm in Hoboken, right? So then here's where the issue comes into play. We're young people, so we don't have a lot of money to spend, so you pregame hard, right? So then that fucks me up, because it's like, all right, I'm going to drink fucking like six White Claws at the pregame, but I'm not even counting that as my drink, right? Then you go to the bar, and you're like, all right, let me get a vodka soda. Then you're like, oh, I don't know if they're putting a lot of liquor in here. So let me switch to like uh, White Claws because then at least I know what I'm getting. <laughs> but then sometimes the vodka sodas are super strong because the bartender's pouring yeah, them heavy. Yeah. And then sometimes you're fucking like, I got to save money. They're selling like, you know, like the Santa Con two years ago. I walk into this bar. I already ate a tray of Jello shots to myself at the pregame, <laughs> a six pack of White Claws. I walk in and I order a White Claw at $7 and I look in their like fridge thing. They're selling four locals. I'm like, how much are those? At a bar? Yeah. They're like $6. I'm like, well, I'll take two the of tall, those. The tall yeah, four, tall boys, really? $6. Within an hour, I was vomiting on myself in the corner. I was thrown out of the bar, and it was a $40 <laughs> cover. So it's like the pacing thing of like trying to be cost effective, not knowing how much the bartender's pouring, how much you're going to pregame. That's what fucks us up. The biggest thing, I think, is the pregame, where yeah. it's like, I, I think. Because it, it's similar. Where you don't count those drinks. You know, I always tell myself, like, I was always big on drinking on the train going somewhere. Oh, whether yeah. Big in time. Boston. Brown bag. Absolutely. Brown dude, bag, just boys. rushing them back or, like, in the back of my buddy's car. Hell, yeah. And that's what, I think that's where you get yourself in the most trouble. Absolutely. Because it's like if I went to a bar last night and I had four vodka sodas, I would say I had four drinks last night. But... I would have had six white yeah, claws. Yeah, right. Pre-game. You had 13 you know what drinks or whatever. Right. Yeah. And, you know, in, and then especially if like not everyone was pregame and where you get there and then everyone's on their first round of drinks just murdering beers on a Friday night and you're like, ah, oh, fuck. Like, you're I'm, like four deep, yes, five deep. You're like, oh, I got to keep up with these fucking idiots. You know? Yeah. yeah. Shots, like shots are always the death of people because it's like, let's fucking do shots. And it's like, I'm not going to turn down a shot. No way. Think about what the essence of a shot is. It's just... Poison straight up on the dot. It's yeah. like yeah, it's an and you don't count those poison. either as a drink. Do you count a shot as a drink? I do. Yeah. Really? I don't. I'm just I had like, a shot of Jameson last night. It was the first time I had Jameson, and I don't even know when. And I was like, oh, I, I understand why I used to drink this all the time. Dude, it's so good. <laughs> I don't so drink good. it anymore because freshman year of college, we went to this Irish pub that served us underage like every day in fucking Hell's Kitchen. And where'd you go again? What ruckus? No, we uh, went freshman year. We went to Marymount Manhattan together, and Joey stayed there. And I was I a sophomore to, though, yeah. so I, I transferred in. And then I went to Montclair State back Not in Jersey that. after that. But that freshman year, we were at the same bar every fucking Friday. Shout out Malloy's, 
And then I was always drinking the JMO shots, putting them back, and I would have the worst hangovers. And I just threw up so many times off them. I'm like, fuck this. Yeah. And then I told you I went to Ireland years later with one of the bartenders that worked there because I stayed in touch with him. And I was like, yeah, dude, I don't really drink Jameson anymore after Fresh Music. Like, Matt, let me tell you a secret. Yeah. <laughs> that wasn't Jameson. I'm like, oh, fuck. What dude, was bars, it? Dude, bars put whatever. Oh, bars, okay. Bars, yeah. okay. They'll, okay. they'll okay. cut corners anywhere they fucking okay. could. Yeah, it yeah. Was, it was half Jameson, half maple syrup. Oh. <laughs> half fucking Windex. <laughs> uh. <laughs> A little bit of fucking no, um, but straight JMO, yeah, the real stuff is delicious. I love, dude, I love, yeah. but it, but it also though, it's so easy to get yourself in trouble with. Oh, you know oh yeah, mean? it's so easy w- to get yourself way too drunk or like end up in a fight or something. Yeah, wh- whiskey in general, yeah. in whiskey. That's why, because you could put back like shots of Jameson like quick. Yes, you can't do that with Scotch, bourbons, a little no. iffy. You gotta yeah, sip yeah. on yeah, that. Yeah, you get Jack. You're not really. I mean, you could put I, shots. See, the Jack Daniels is like a drink to me. It's like I, I if it's with Coca Cola, then fine, I'll have one. But right. drinking it straight. It was always like, dude, I remember being like 15, 16 and just blacking out so fast off. And it, it just ruined it for me. Yeah, yeah I, I was never it's big like on JD either. like fireball for me at Sweet 16. So sure. for you. Oh, dude, for me, it was, wow, I'm embarrassed. I wish I What is it? I, I, I have a bad one after. Bro, Malibu? Bacardi Raz. Oh, dude. I have Dragonberry. Dude, yeah, Dragonberry, Dragonberry for me, dude, that we, one fucking dude, killed what me. What a fucked up time. Yes. They, they were obviously marketing the Absolutely. high school kids there yeah, with that dude. one. Absolutely. Bacardi Raz, Bacardi Dragonberry. I'm Arctic trying to Berry or whatever dude, it was. Dude, my Shore House so sophomore year, I went to prom as a sophomore. I had a senior buy me a fucking bottle of this shit that I loved. It was called Three Olives Loopy. It was Fruit I Loops that. flavored yeah, I vodka. I remember that. Who's that market? Those are those are like adult? yeah. The, well, aren't isn't that like the Martini brand for yeah. like housewives? Yeah, dollars? totally. And they yeah. do like really crazy flavors, Fruit Loops, fucking like yeah. banana cream and shit. It was that. It was. Uh, did you guys remember UV Blue? Yeah, yeah, dude. Of course. That was just drinking like Jolly Rancher. Yeah, juice. it was. Like, I used to just like to, I used to drink that and I just pretend I'm drinking uh, drinking hypnotic. Yeah, oh, yeah. Hypnotic. <laughs> <laughs> fucking puke is blue was, in the morning. Dude, I had I had vodka in a blue Gatorade. The gla- oh. you know glacier ice. Yes. Like the light blue, the, the same, baby blue. Uh, yeah. I'm on the Seaside Heights boardwalk down the shore one year, and this cop stops me and he's like, What is that? What is that? Because I put vodka in it, so now it was like green, like a little lighter than the green yeah. on your shirt. And he's like, What is this? And I'm like, It's Gatorade, sir. He's like, This isn't Glacier Frost or whatever. He's like, What are you drinking? Hypnotic? And I remember being like, damn, son, like you think I was he white? Yeah, yeah, dude. He was like some white bike (laughs) cop. And I'm like, damn, son, you think I'm plugged up like that? Like I'm drinking. What did he do? Did he take it from you? Yeah, he made me pour it out. He's like, he's like, pour it out or a ticket. What an asshole. Yeah. 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 So Ryan O'Toole, man, an honor to have you. I'm happy um, to be here. Thanks let, for picking me up at the house today, dude. No problem, dude. That's like Save me from taking the old B forty six down here. Yeah, I don't know how buses work in Brooklyn, let alone Manhattan. Yeah. But listen, I anything like I could Manhattan. do. I like him in Manhattan. Really? Me too. Nice sometimes. I yeah. couldn't even tell you, dude. I know how to use the bus system in London better than I do in New York City. Yeah, That's I, a fact. I, I have an oyster cut, I think, in my no, it's not in my wallet anymore. Yeah. I had the one. tube. Yeah. Tube. But uh, tell us about yourself, Ryan. Give us a little bit of your background. What was your childhood like? You're a Boston native. You're not a native of New York. What's no. what's that like? Tell uh, us about your, your uh, earlier years. My earlier years, like what years one to ten? Well, you, I remember you saying like you had a dose of the burbs, and then you had the dose of like yeah, southeast. So I was, I'm very you know? yeah. So I was born in South Boston, Massachusetts. I lived there like full time. I'd say until I was uh, thirteen. And then uh, I moved to the suburbs on, on Peabody, Massachusetts, my other hometown, you know, both of my hometowns, Southie and Pete. Well, I lived in a place, Lynn, Massachusetts as well. For, oh, yeah, I'm familiar with Lynn. Yeah, a year and a half. I was I was in a fucking ghetto there. It was uh, it's pretty rough. But uh, yeah, I don't know. I'm uh, fucked around out there. Uh, what was the question again? Well, <laughs> <Well, day. laughs> and so then, so but so then, when you when you were in high school, yeah, you were telling us that that's kind of where acting. Yeah, came into so play I was a you. fucking asshole in high school. I really like looking back. I kind of feel I was just always in tr- always in trouble, like fighting and like how Goodwill Hunting were. You? <laughs> <laughs> other than other than being the smartest kid in my fucking class, <laughs> not so much, dude. But like, uh, it was most. I just, dude. I, if I didn't, if I could swear. Like, if swearing wasn't against the rules in high school, I don't think I would be in that much trouble. It was always like, I was like, well, this is fucking stupid. And, like, you get in trouble in high school for saying something's fucking stupid. Right, you know what I right. mean? So I just kept, like, acting out and shit. And, uh, you know, I just, I'd just leave school. And then uh, it was, like, my, G- yeah, the end of my junior year, I remember my teacher, like, signed me up for drama and improv. 
but it wouldn't affect it wouldn't come into effect until my senior year of high school and then i went to school the first day of, i remember the first day of high school we the first day of senior year of high school like got our schedules and stuff and it was drama it was improv first period and then drama dude i was like what the fuck is this bro and then i went and it was just like basic improv, like yes mm. and on the first day of school. And I was fucking stoned. I remember me and my buddy Andrew smoked weed. We smoked weed before school. And I was so fucking high in this class. And it was so fun. I was like, dude, I don't even feel like this is school right now. Because right. it was just an improv class, first period of high school. I was like, this is crazy. And I remember telling everybody, about it. I was like, dude, you guys have no idea what you're missing out on. But everyone in the class was like theater kids I wasn't cool with. You know, not that I just didn't know them. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. And then I was like, this is the best. And then every day in high school, I was just doing, I remember like arranging my schedule. I was like, no, I, I don't care. I'm retaking the classes and stuff. And it was sick. And then I got into improv once high school ended. I remember I didn't do it for like a year or two, I think. And I was like, dude, I miss doing improv. And then I was at a uh, improv asylum in Boston in the North end. It's like the North end is like pretty much little Italy of Boston. Mm -hmm. It was a fucking awesome improv theater over there. Guinea Wops there. Oh, so many. <laughs> so, so many, dude. Greaseball. Dude. Yeah. <laughs> and, uh, but then I was over there and then I was there like fucking four or five nights a week just doing the classes, going to the shows and hanging out and Fuck shit. Yeah. yeah. Fuck yeah. So. so now when you're in improv in Boston, like, did you do any theater in high school yet? Have you touched like a play or anything or is it just No, I did like, I did like, I would work on like monologues and like scenes in class, but it was always like we could choose our own scenes. Like I remember the first monologue I worked on was uh, it was fucking Quint's monologue from Jaws, where Dude, he's talking about the black eyes. I fucking did Quint's monologue in my high school did you? class, but the one where he's like, "You ever see a shark's eye?" Yeah, <laughs> yeah, that's the one. I'm, that's what I'm talking about. Oh, oh uh, I thought black you said eyes. black eyes. No, I was, like, <laughs> I was like, Quint sounds like he'd have a racist rap. Absolute Robert Shaw, dude. Absolute yeah, I was like, I don't remember dude. his racist rap, but like, I think it was against the Jews. There was a, <laughs> it was, dude. There he was, does say something to like, uh, what's his name's character? Uh, Richard Dreyfus. Yeah, 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 there was a there was a book I was reading about Jaws, and he was talking about during the film and how he would just torture Richard Dreyfus, and it was just way too much, and like Spielberg had to separate them and stuff. Yeah, like pretty. I much. heard that too. Yeah, it was it was awesome. So yeah, we did the exact same model. Like, yeah, that's hilarious. That's I got great. to choose that, and I did another one from like Saving Private Ryan. But those. Yeah, so it was always shit like that. But yeah. I was never really like doing. I wasn't like really like acting on it. You know, I do remember though when I was a kid, I went to a, I went to a Catholic school in Southie, uh, St. Augustine's. It's not there no more. And I did like a, this is something I think of a lot. I was in third, second or third grade, and uh, there was like a Christmas time play. Mm -hmm. And it was, do you know the three wise men? Yeah. 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 And I was one of them and I loved it. <laughs> and then the next year, everyone, everyone's like, no, I'm not doing that. It's fucking gay, dude. And then I remember I signed up for it and I wanted to do it. And then I, just listen to all my friends. I was like, I think about that a lot where it's like, if I just said, no, well, fuck you guys, dude. Like what would have, I think it would have had a, but. Dude, it's hey, so man. funny you're saying Same this. I'm not like capping or bullshitting right now, but like, it's funny you said that thing about Quince and I had the, in elementary school, I played Joseph every year at my church for the yeah. Christmas thing. And that was kind of like one of my first forays into theater. Totally. And then I doubled down because they did like a living stations of the cross. And I was always the guard that like, kill jesus like i have to literally <laughs> nail him to the cross and then you go up and do a monologue. it was the roman right it was yeah. The, yeah and i'm like i was the guy that like gambled for his scarf i was like do you like to gamble it was crazy <laughs> i don't yeah. remember i don't even really remember the three wise men i think we just give something to jesus or something myrrh frankincense and gold is that what it was yeah because yeah. it's always funny the, i think family guy did a good joke about it. it's like gold is obviously sick and then it's like myrrh and frankincense like who the fuck wants that yeah, what are those Frankincense is like the it's shit that it's you light. Incense. Yeah, it's like the thing you light in church that makes it smell good on like Christmas. You know yeah, the guy about? comes in. Yeah, he's swinging that thing. fucking thing. Around oh, with the, the bell. It has a bell, right? <laughs> no, I don't know. It's like a chain. I, I know you're yeah, talking. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It. And then myrrh is like <laughs> drugs. I, I don't know what myrrh is. I think it's cologne. Isn't like, myrrh the dude from Impractical Jokers? Yeah. Myrrh. <laughs> hey, myrrh. Now tell him that you're trans. Yeah. <laughs> Mer Mer's that is it Mer's that disease? What is it? Middle Eastern Respiratory Syndrome or something like that? Oh, Mer's, yeah. Mer's, Mer's. It's, Mer's. it's like, isn't it kind of like COVID? Yeah, yeah, yeah. It is, but Jeez. it's in like Iraq. I didn't know that. Yeah. yeah. You learned something new. So you have like your first taste with the improv thing and yeah. then where do you go after that? Is that when you get into comedy? Is that when you get yeah. into deeper acting? So then I was like, I realized in improv, because I love 
like the at. I love the out of same with comedy, but I love like when you go so deep into improv, you don't know where you are. Right. You know, I love that with every type of performance art, but I would always find that I was going towards funny play, funny and uncomfortable places, and I like realized I was good at it, and like other people in my class were telling me, and then even in acting, it was like I felt like naturally I was like a little bit on the funnier side, even in serious stuff. Mm-hmm. And uh, I remember I did like this stand up comedy like writing class in Cambridge, and uh, fucking. I just didn't have, I was drinking so much and potty and I didn't really have like an interest to go do an open, I was being a fucking pussy was what it was. I was like too afraid to, everyone I think goes through it where it's like no one just thinks of, at least to my knowledge, no one would just think about doing stand up and then just do it a, that day. Like, right. you know what I mean? Like I didn't, I was like so afraid and it was like a right and I was just like, oh, it's cool or whatever. And then fast forward, like I was like, okay, I'm in acting class every night. I'm at improv every night. It was like five days a week while working full time. I'm like, I need to move to New York. There's no sense of me. I'm like, I'm doing too much to just be in Boston. So I applied. There was this dude killing it in one of my acting classes. I was like, dude, where the fuck did you learn how to do that? And it was like noticeable how good this dude was. Like, you know, when you see a great actor mm-hmm. in person, you're like, whoa, this dude he can fucking act. And he told me it was the Lee Strasberg Theater and Film Institute. I was like, oh. So I looked him up on Instagram in class. And I remember it said there was like an open house like a week later. And that night I just bought a train ticket to New York. And I'm like, oh, I'll go check it out. And I was like, I got to go here. So then they, I got in. I was pumped. And then I moved to New York like a, eight months later or something. What was wow. that audition process like? It was like, it wasn't even really an audition process. It was just like, they just wanted to see people that were serious about it. You know what I mean? Where... I remember, dude, I went in, right? And uh, I remember I went in for the interview. It was was the Friday before the Patriots lost to the Eagles in the Super Bowl. And uh, my life was a fucking mess at the time. (laughs) There there was like a, dude, it was a disaster. I was partying so much. I remember I I fucked around with somebody. And uh, yeah, big time chance I had a serious STD. And uh, (laughs) uh, a pretty serious one, you know what I mean? Uh, I'm talking grand slam home run. <laughs> uh, not like, you know, I'm, I'm talking the big one, you know, little yeah. Magic Johnson. Yeah. And, uh, <laughs> yeah, dunk. yeah. Now, there was a possibility of it, and I found out that <laughs> I found out like on the train coming to New York, and I was already a mess. I was drinking, so I was gambling a lot, and, uh, and then I was also like psyched about the Patriots game on Sunday. And I went in the fucking interview and I was just crying my eyes out. I was like, listen, I went to the open house. Like, and yeah, and then they just let me in. They, she's like, no, you need to come here and get this out. I just went crazy in the, in the interview room. Dory Sullivan, Lee Strasberg. Just say, I swear to God, saved like my life where it was like, if I didn't get in, uh, I think if I didn't get into the school and like the program at that time I think the timing of it was so important because I was really fucking around like I was really fucking every night just drinking causing problems like Boston this is still yeah I was living in Boston but I came to New York just for a day and uh I was like I need to get the fuck out it was just at the point where it's like I could see myself falling into a cycle where it's like I could easily bartend make enough money save up and you know i worked with people who bought houses from bartending i was working at a really good place and uh yeah but it was just i didn't want to do it anymore you know right you get you you, like trap yourself into that to that kind of thing so she let me she told me that night this was you know a couple months after the open house and stuff she's like um we want we want to have you in the program and stuff and you know and uh i remember i told myself i was like i'm not gonna gamble I already gambled on the Patriots for that weekend. I already had, like, money on them to win the Super Bowl, which they lost. And uh, I remember telling myself, I was like, I'm not going to gamble. I'm not going to drink. I'm not going to spend my- I'm not going to do anything. I'm just going to save up all my money and move to New York. And I did. You know, fuck that's you. what I feel like the big thing was because it's like if she said no, I would have just been like, well, fuck this. I mean, there was <laughs> – I, I, like, thought I might have had the biggest disease. I was a disaster. And then I remember – so, no, it was beforehand – I didn't find out on the train to New York. I found out because the next morning I woke up and it was a Saturday, I believe. So Friday or a Saturday and I was running late and I'm like, fuck, I got to run to, I was staying right by Madison Penn station where you get the Amtrak back to Boston and uh, the doctors called and I knew it was the doctors and I knew they had the results and I was there. I remember looking at the phone. It was laying on my bed as I was getting, and I'm in a rush. Cause I'm like, I, I made the train. I remember making the train barely. And, uh, I remember they were like, uh, yeah, you don't have any, 
we have all your results, you know, blah, everything. Like, you need to, and I remember the lady's like, you can't be being that irresponsible sexually. You yeah. know what I mean? Like, that's really fucking stupid. You dodged that's the fucking bullet. nuts, dude. Yeah. <laughs> I could only imagine what that, what was the time span between the test and you finding like, out here? I think it was like two or three weeks. And Jesus it was like, Christ, it was, in, it was all, when I tell you, it was. Why do they make you wait so long? That's cause so they fucked had a, up. Because I think you get a, for HIV and stuff, it was uh I gave blood, piss, and hair, I think. I forget what it was. I told them, I was like, I need, I go, the, I remember going to the place. I remember going to the place I got it taken at. I, w- I went in the next, when I found out that this was like a possibility. And uh, I went in and I was like, listen, I need an STD test right now. And they're like, well, and I remember she's like, well, we're busy. I was like, listen, I go, I might have fucking HIV right now. I'm being 100% serious. Like, you know, I, I might have a, there's a how old are you at this point uh 2017 2018 so it was like 25 Jeez, yeah. and uh i was like i need to you know i need to check this out and just for the record here i wasn't fucking drug addicts or anything like it, <laughs> let's, let's make I'm, i wasn't trading heroin for fucking okay i i was in iris i did something stupid okay that's all it was and it, you know as but, we all do. Yes, but there was a possibility that the consequence, there was a really good possibility the consequences of this one was a little bit more serious than. <laughs> Jesus. Yeah. So, uh, and I remember I told that right to the lady, and she's like, just, we'll get you in there. Just sit down. And I remember <laughs> waiting there, and it was like shaking, and I was, felt like the room was like trembling. And I was like, and they took everything. I was like, oh my God, thank you, fucking Jesus Christ. <laughs> You know, I remember praying. To God. I'm not even a religious person. I remember praying to God. You know, and what yeah. was it like when you got that call? Probably the best Dude. train ride home you've ever had yeah. in your life. Yeah, I remember. Yeah, oh, it was amazing. It was, uh, it was crazy. I remember just being like, I was so. I remember like crying. I was so relieved. I was like, and that's. But that was also something I think that like broke my favor. Where it's like, I think it was like a kind of a collision thing. It really is like yeah. a cosmic fucking mix yeah. of everything happening at once. It was like a big thing. Cosmic like, gumbo. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> it was like. <laughs> It was like a big thing where it's like so much shit happened and it was just like, just fucking, you have, I had a, I realized I'm like, okay, now I have a legitimate chance to clean my fucking act up. Like Mm -hmm. everything's here for me. All I got to do is get money to go to school and move. I can do that. I'll work. And I did. I worked six days a week. So then you get back to Boston after that trip. And then what's the timeline of like you from Boston going to New York full time. Uh, so I was originally going to move here in the spring. So this was February. Yeah, it was, for, it was Super Bowl Sunday week, Super Bowl weekend. So it was February. I was going to move originally, I think, like three months later. Because I already had money saved up. Excuse me. And uh, I remember pushing it back. I was like, oh, could I, could I go in the spring instead? She's like, yeah. So then I just had even. So it was uh, six months. Nice. Nice. And it was just, dude, I remember every day just working. And then I stopped hanging out and I stopped drinking. I was still drinking, but it was like, I wasn't going out spending money drinking. You yeah, know what I mean? Like casual hard, yes. hanging out. Drinking. Yeah. I was just like, if I was drinking, I was just drinking beers at my house and shit with my friends. And mm-hmm. it was, and then I stopped getting, I didn't get, I went to Saratoga, the racetrack for a weekend in the summer. But uh, I was gambling on horses like almost every day, gambling on sports every day. And I cut that out completely. I remember I lost. I remember that night. I remember I lost 500 bucks on the Pats, and it was right before the game. And uh, I think my bookie owed me money. And uh, I don't. Anyways, I, a couple of my buddies were in Vegas like a week, bef- a couple weeks before, and I said, "Just bet the Patriots to win the Super Bowl right now." And it was like I think I gave him 500 bucks. And uh, like right before the game, I remember I was going to bet like another 500 or a thousand on it because I was like. It's the last time I'm going to gamble. And then I was like, no, that's kind of playing into the mind state that I am uh, getting away from. Right, you know? right. So I didn't do it. And I'm glad I didn't because obviously right. most impo- more importantly, the Pats lost, which yeah. sucked. But uh, it was, yeah, it just, I don't know. Broke a cycle. It absolutely did. So, folks, winter is coming. What does that mean? You let yourself go a little bit. You, you have an extra beer out at the bar. You know, you, you let your, your scruff get out of control because who cares you're inside all day but the one thing you don't want to let get out of control your pubes no your way your pubis you don't want that no Ryan O'Toole could tell you uh, I'll tell 100%. you who else is coming me when I shave my sack <laughs> exactly there, man you know? yeah cause guys listen it's winter I know you want to grow that extra hair but no snow bunny's gonna want to see a hairy cock no you know Ryan let me ask you something let me because have. 
you know, you got a beard. We all got hairy bodies. What are you looking like down there? I'm 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 pretty good. Manscaped, yeah, yeah I like manscaped. You know what I mean? They, uh, you know, you don't cut your ball sack like you do with other blades and you stuff. You used like to that. cut your ball sack with other blades, am I right? Dude, n- Three and one, dude. I'm surprised that could uh, I could be like Lance Armstrong right now, very easily with some of the mistakes I <sighs> wow. made. Wow, that's Christ. that's not a good uh, review. I'll that. tell you what. One time I cut my sack so bad in the winter, I was walking around outside. I saw a trail of red behind me in the snow <laughs> when I was walking my dog. You don't want to do good. that, folks. And that's and that's why we have Manscaped, guys. Manscaped is coming. They have the best thing for the holiday season: the Performance Package 4.0. What is the PP 4.0, you ask? You're going to get the lawnmower trimmer 4.0. It's the latest generation. Listen to that. Horsepower. I'm getting hard. There's a light. Just you can shave me. your sack in the dark. Do you know how much I shave my sack in the dark now? Here, check that out. I like to light a few candles, get into me. You don't yeah. need the lights blaring on. Pretty clean, too. There's not too many <coughs> pubes uh, lodged in these blades. Well, well, you know why, Ryan? Why? Because you get a mini brush. Oh! You get a mini and brush, too. on top of that, it's water-resistant, folks. Throw that thing under the sink for a little bit. You know, yeah. not too long, really? but put that it in shit the shower. will fucking clean you up and real ma- quick. May I ask, battery-powered or rechargeable? Rechargeable. rechargeable. Oh! Rechargeable. Yep. Look at this. We're living in the year 20,000. I'll tell you what. I think that's a fantastic gift, whether it's for your buddies, your friends, your kids, your father. I think that's an unbelievable Seriously. gift. Get it for your mother. And, and Get and it listen, for your totally. That's just they the tip of the iceberg. That's the first thing that comes in the performance package. You'll also get the crop reviver. Ryan, you're having a long day. You go for a run in the morning. You get home. Your sack is stinking. You spray that right on your nads, and you're going to be feeling like 100 bucks. Really? Look at this. Ball toner. Refreshing ball toner. Dude, oh, I, dude you spritz that up, you go Matt, out Matt, that, I think like, that's your favorite product. That is my favorite product because I work at a desk all day. My balls are swamping down there. You yeah. know what I'm saying? Right. Beautiful. You know what I just realized? Maybe you could help me out with this, Ryan. Not only is this thing just an incredible machine, what does it kind of look like to you? A, dil- a vibrator. It looks like a clean cock. Yeah. Doesn't it? Wow. It does. Do you think that was on purpose by the brilliant team at Manscaped? Something else I think needs to be worth mentioned. I've seen it on every single one of their bottles. Vegan and animal cruelty free. Dude. Yeah. That's a, a big selling point for me. And same with the crop preserver. Absolutely. A nice ball deodorant. And look at this. Shampoo, oh. conditioner. The you two were just telling me. And that, love... that, that's not included in the PP 4.0. Well, I'm we'll just saying. Make note. I love but how. You should buy it. You should buy it. All their products. All their products are animal and cruelty free. I like yeah. that a lot. The crop preserver, ball deodorant. Get out of the shower. You, you dry off. You want to keep them fresh. Lather that on. I feel like it's the big there. thing is the taint, dude. That's where like a lot of the oh smell is. You know this what I mean? Is gonna, this is going to really fix yeah. the taint yeah. up. Well, I'll tell you what. The best thing is I used to never be able to shave my taint, dude. That was fucking foreign territory down there. But look at this. A 4K light allows you to see in that yeah. hard to reach place light. in between the balls and the asshole. Yeah. And then the last thing that's going to make this up, well, not the last thing, second to last thing, you're going to get the weed whacker. Hell yeah. Trim your. Oh my God, listen to that. Ah. Beautiful, dude. Fucking like nose trimmer. Yeah. Trim my nose up uh, real Nick quick. Nick resistant as well, I assume. Oh, yeah. yes. A quick nose job. And the ears. You can do the ears as well. And you'll nose also job get... sounds like when you fuck someone in the nose. Yeah. Or a woman uses her nose, or a man. To jerk off your penis, <laughs> maybe two noses, nose job. I could see this. I could, there's sensitive areas. I could see it really doing well with. Well, listen, folks. If but you want to delve there's into that sexual thing. territory, you're gonna want to shave your shit down there. 100. percent Shave it down and put on the anti-chafing underwear. Oh, that, oh you're man, also gonna get boxes. that in the package. Um, I love it. Minor pair of boxes. Mine are covered oh, dude, in sack so sweat right soft, now. Dude, it's in the, the hamper. softest pair of boxes I've ever worn. What, yeah. do they, what do they look like? It's like a compression like, short. Yeah, like it's a like a black. black. Oh, that's my favorite. Yeah, black, really, really good. Dude, the bag is fantastic. And that's dude. the last item too. The bag you get is the, the, the traveling bag. bag. Fucking perfect. Right. You got what could you do with toiletries, that bag? dude? I'm a big fan of reusing bags. We could put all your shit in here. I like shaving bags. I'm a big fan of shit. See, like, look at you traveled with it because there's a Delta napkin in here, so it's like perfect for traveling. Even keeping it in the bag. Bathroom to I say was when you shaved your pubes on the on plane. The plane <laughs> right, Mile High Club, right there, baby. <laughs> That's what I'm talking about. And so now, this is the exciting part, folks. Oh wait, did I mention if you use code Good Crack at the website, you're going to get 20 percent off and free shipping Shit. on everything. On everything, not just the fucking performance package, not just even their, their new everything, products, guys. 20 percent off. Are you kidding me? When Christmas is coming up, how are you supposed to feed your whore wife and your fucking stupid little kids if you're spending all this money on Christmas gifts? 20 percent off free shipping. Get the fuck out of you here. You can put that towards something else. And what's going to make you feel better when it's vegan? 
cruelty free, paraben free, gluten free. Gluten free. There gluten-free. we go. Gluten free. Wait for the two in one. When, when's this air? When's this episode airing? Tomorrow. Okay, so we're less than three weeks until Christmas. Yeah. You know? So three weeks. Clock is ticking. Uh, Twenty Kick days. In. Twenty Kick days, baby. And guys, so with that said, you're gonna get twenty percent off and free shipping with the code GoodCrack at Manscaped.com. That's twenty percent off and free shipping with the code GoodCrack. That's G O O D C R A C K at Manscaped.com. I mean, these products are snow joke. That's right. <laughs> it's not a lot of good crack around. We were talking about fentanyl a couple minutes ago. So yeah. get you good crack. Get yeah. you good crack. Listen, you guys, can. for Christmas, don't buy Coke for your kids. Buy a Manscaped product. Yeah, absolutely. I could guarantee you this much. You buy some Coke, there might be some fentanyl in it. You buy any Manscaped product, not only is there no gluten in it, there's no fentanyl in it. And you could, you could, you could quote me on that one, I swear to God. <laughs> fentanyl in me. Your balls will thank you. Your balls will thank you. It's a great, it is a fucking awesome gift, though, for Christmas. I think that's an A-plus <laughs> gift for Christmas. I agree. You, go, you think you'll get some? Get some Manscaped? I, I hope so. I hope someone's watching this and looks out for me. Right. Okay. <laughs> I'm going to repost this. If anyone's listening, I'm open to Manscaped. I'm open to their, their gifts. Well, we might be doing a little giveaway. Oh! So, uh, <laughs> oh! Keep your ears open. And folks for the good crack manscaped giveaway then you get to new york and you're straight into Strasbourg. and are you even doing stand-up yet at this point no no okay so then no. what was it like you get to Strasbourg and do you dive right in or is it like i weird? went to Strasbourg. yeah it was weird and uh it was like the best thing in my life going to school was the best thing in my life because it was all international kids you know really? what i mean yeah and it was like I've, i already felt a little foreign sometimes being around other american kids and then when i was around i, I never like knew people from like south america and shit like i was never friendly with like you know one of my best friends in the world right now she's from fucking india you know it was her first time in america like i, I was all of a sudden i was like socializing with like people where it's like they're from totally different parts of the world yeah. that i've never like you know i dude i was cool with an indian dude on my neighborhood in my neighborhood who just worked at the corner store but like i didn't I wasn't like going out drinking beers with him and stuff yeah. and hanging out. So like that, that was like the craziest. That was like a really that big thing. That is like the coolest part about those acting schools, especially when you're going to go and learn like a method. Like it was the same experience with me when I went to Esper because it's like it's people from different countries. It's people that have been acting for years, yeah. went to college for it, theater people. But like when you're starting out learning this new thing, everyone's on the same level. Mm -hmm. and you all kind of have the same goal. So like everyone's on equal footing and you kind of just fucking chip at it together it's it's dope it really is a cool experience no it was, it was awesome and yeah. it was like so it was yeah it was amazing you know and uh i loved it but it was just acting all all day you know which was cool i was like in you know, a acting pro like 30 hours a week just classes and shit. is that a two-year program it, i did one year but mm -hmm. yeah you could have done two years mm -hmm. if to be honest if i didn't if i didn't uh get into stand up the way I really got into it, I probably would have been like, Yeah, I want to go again for another year. Right. And I love it, don't get me wrong. Like I, I love the place, but it was like once I got into stand up a couple months later, then I was like, dude, I just want to do stand up all the fucking time. Yeah. Yeah. So and getting that, into oh, sorry. Uh, so no, you go. Yeah, so getting into stand up was it kind of just like a eventually couple months in. eventually just being like I've been wanting to do this, yeah. so like sack up and go. I was now in that a, you're here. Yeah, I was in like an improv troupe uh at the producers club. And they had stand, they still have stand up at the, I haven't been there since the first time I did stand up, but, uh, they, have you guys been to the producers club? No, where's that? 44th and 9th. No, uh, no, no. It's like a, it's a bunch of black box theaters and they have a bar in there, but they were doing comedy and I would always walk by it. I was like, dude, I need to do that. And, you know, that's all I could think about. And, uh, and then I remember I was like, yeah, I'm just going to do it. And I did it. I remember January 2nd, 2019 and, uh, fucking. Yeah, it was like once I did that, and of course, like I didn't do well, but like it was weird because I saw myself doing. There's only I, the only way I can describe it is I saw myself doing comedy, where it's like it, it was like I was in the corner of the room, but I was watching myself down. Mm -hmm. And I remember there was like a girl to my left, she was like on her phone. It was like two people not paying attention, but I was like there doing it. And then right when I left, I was like so fucking high, where I was like that was crazy, yeah. dude. You know what I mean? For sure. Yeah. yeah. That first time you do it. Especially if you're bomb, you like get off stage. You're like, I need to do that. Yeah, right. Fucking. Again. That's how like, I would oh, be. Yeah. Right away, like it's addicting. I dude. remember like being outside, like shaking. I was like, what the fuck, dude? I didn't go to sleep till like seven in the morning. This was at like ten thirty, <laughs> and uh, and then I remember being like, I already paid for school. I already paid like the twenty grand or whatever the fuck it was, and I remember 
being like, I just want to do stand up constantly. Like, I, this is all I want to do. I just don't. I'm like, I don't care about acting. I was, I remember telling my friends at school, I was like, I'm not fucking going. I go, this is all. And then the next day and day out, and then I was just like finding open mics and just doing them constantly. Like, and I was just not getting tired, you know? And, what were some of the original mics you were doing? Like what spot? Like similar to where we're at now, like off McDougal? Or like- yeah, there were there were those, but the first places I was doing was, um, so I did the Producers Club first, and I don't think I ever did it again since. And then it was, uh, it was a place called Pioneers. It's a bar on like 29th or 28th. It's Pioneers. Uh, and then I ended up finding like the Grizzly Pear and shit like that. But I remember I did. I'm trying to think where else I was doing them. It was mostly like the Grizzly Pear and shit because I was like kind of by my. I always wanted to do it near the Comedy Cellar. Yeah. Because like mm-hmm. I, I have such a respect for that. But you know, and I know what the Comedy Cellar was and shit. And uh, when I saw they did open mics like there and Greenwich and then the Lantern with the comedy shop now, but it used to be the Lantern. Uh, I was like, oh, this is cool. It's like right there. So yeah. Then I was just like there every day. And it was like, then it was like, I, then I went back to acting school and then it was like in between classes and sh- I was like, just, I couldn't stop thinking about comedy. Right. You know? You just got jazzed for yeah, it. Yeah, it was just like so much more. And I still love acting. Don't get me wrong. You know, I fucking love acting, but <laughs> comedy is just like so. What was your like your early days like? Like, did you feel like you were confident and natural with it right away? Did you figure out the writing right away? No, like, I don't even know if I still figured out the writing. So I, I, everyone thought I was crazy because like I would, the, the <laughs> dude, Strasburg was crazy because I also I should pref. I never. This was another big part about like. I never was in touch with my emotions, you know what I mean, until I went to acting. I didn't know how to deal with things, you know what I mean? I would just, like, you know, so I'd go to these classes and my teachers would just break me down, you know? Like, I never fucking cried, like, you know, sometimes I would, but I wouldn't, like, I would go to acting school, I was crying every day, you know what I mean? And it's like, crying, I mean, it's like, I I wasn't even sad, but I was just crying and shit, and I was so, like, emotional. And then I'd go to these mics and I would just act fucking crazy. It was just like, because I was like, I didn't know anyone. I didn't care. I really just wanted the experience. I wanted like the, I started like feeling what it was about, like feeling like the, where comedy comes from. Mm -hmm. And it wasn't like necessarily it was funny, but it was like, I'm just going to act mental. I don't give a fuck. And it was more so, and I know a lot of people, a lot of people told me since like, dude, I thought you were like actually a crazy person. Like, you know, (laughs) my best friends now, but like, they were like, they were like, I, they thought I was like an actual crazy person, you know, which I might have been, I might be, but it was like, I wanted to, I just wanted to explode. Did yeah. you always have that though? Like, were you like, cause we always talk about it. Like we're talking about it, like Patty on the pod and like, I think Franklin too. It's like, were you like the class clown in your high school? Yeah. Kids used to tell me all the time. Like they're like, dude, you all the time, but yeah. you know, you don't believe them. Yeah. I remember my yeah. improv class at producer, when I was doing improv at producers club, everyone, I remember, uh. One of my buddies, my, my he's he's like uh, he's like dude, he's like you're literally the funniest person I've ever seen, and he was like telling me that. That was like I think bef- right when I started stand up, you know. I was like, oh, yeah, you know. I always liked getting laughs. I always could tell I was funny, but I think a lot of that though was I was like a city kid where it's like if you wanted to like get respect from other kids, you had to kind of be funny through yeah. talking shit. Right. Dude, that's but, exactly what we always yeah. say in New Jersey, and it's like absolutely. That's the thing is like if you're the guy that could make everyone laugh at the bar or at the party and you're the funny guy great and then you think to yourself if you have any fucking self-awareness like who the fuck would i be to go do stand up yeah. everyone's mm-hmm. always like go fucking do stand up but then there is something there because if you have that brain and you have that knack to kind of touch into people and fucking like make something come out of them you got something i think the hardest part that we've been dealing with like you know because we're still so early on is like translating that to the stage and it's yeah. not some like ethereal bullshit it's like you really have to fucking work and write and figure out totally how to fucking hon- like hone this thing and put it on the stage yeah and act. no and there's no like direction to do it but yeah to, exactly. to what you're saying it's like dude the kids i grew up with were like so fun like my buddy chris is so my buddy tim is like one of the funniest dudes i've ever met in my life yeah I remember, he's like he, he would never do st- he's told me he would never do stand-up you know mm-hmm. but that being said like when i sit down with him and like we just you know, play pool or fucking watch football. It's just like, I'm like, God damn. I'm like, this dude's so funny. Yeah. Right. Like How he, many he, friends? He has no have. idea. Yeah. Right. Like yeah. Roman Ellie Kish. But like, there's some people that just like, it wouldn't be able to translate to the stage. Yeah. Or they're, they're not like fucking crazy enough like us to get up and do it. You know yeah. I mean? No, hundred percent. Cause I describe it. I tell everyone like stand up. Once you get the hang of it, you can be confident on stage. It comes easy, blah, blah, blah. You still got to write, whatever. But like 
the first time doing stand up is like I think the hardest thing I've ever done. Like yeah, I'm, I've acted Hell on yeah, stages dude. in front of a thousand people. I've done this, blah blah blah. Dude, that whole fucking day I was in my room scanning the photos for oh. work, just fucking saying my set aloud like a thousand oh, times. Dude, just like I was going, I was there, timing myself. I was going nuts. I was just talking to myself on the drive and just shaking. Yeah. Like the wheel was shaking and like bringing us back to present times like that was our first show and you were there that first show i'll never forget you were the last guy to go up and greg's like ryan o'toole you got three minutes last guy because he just fucking probably sprinted over for the pair you had your backpack and you're like fuck it three minutes and actually i I hate to get all like fucking like oh wow that like meant something to me but like i noticed right away because he's like you got three minutes and i was like dude what am i gonna do with five and you're like, fuck yeah, I'll do three minutes. And you crushed in that three minutes. I remember and that, that. That showed me like, oh, this guy's the real deal. And this is how you like have to do it. Like I think, any time you can get, you fucking take yeah, it. Yeah. Well, I think that's the biggest thing. Like what you're saying is like. You got to want it. Yeah. yeah. And you got it. You have, more importantly, I think than wanting it, you have to take it. Where it's like, I always think like, I hate when people say, oh, that open mic was useless. So whatever. It's like, I'm such a big proponent of like the art of performing whether it's fucking public speaking or anything like i was i was talking with someone yesterday and she was telling me she saw a play recently and she's like not even into acting but she was saying how passionate the actors were she's mm-hmm. like i didn't really like the play but she's like i like seeing someone throw their life into that and yeah. i get that where it's like dude i don't know shit about like cooking or fucking building stuff or anything like that but i like when people are just so into and I, for me it's like stand ups just something where it's like i'm so into it so yeah. i like experiencing it you know i like when i'm dealing with shit in my life and it's like i'm gonna do stand up while i'm doing this or something happens and i'm gonna do stand up while doing this because that's the way i was taught to act where it was like i was depressed i was fucked up uh i was on a bunch of pills and shit and i was like you know what i want to put this and remember how i feel into my acting so it's like let me do it with comedy too right you know who are some of your early comedy influences that kind of like were informing what your early shit was like so it's like dude i didn't really like I always liked comedy growing up but I, I was I was a lunatic about sports dude the Patriots and the Red Sox were like my life so it was like that and they still kind of this is still very prominent but it's like when I started doing stand up I was listening to all, Bill Burr fucking Joe all the same shit I'm listening to right now I remember watching a Bob Saget special when I was a kid and it was, I thought it was the funniest thing because I just knew him from Full House yeah and I didn't know that he was like that a dude dirty motherfucker yeah and then I remember <laughs> you know I remember I remember watching Chappelle's show when it was on TV like yeah. every Wednesday and um, you know South Park and shit like that but like stand up itself like Dude, I don't think I watched a full stand-up special until like a couple of years ago. Yeah. yeah. Until like you really dove into the yeah. art form. I, I watched like little clips and I was like, oh, I knew who was funny and I could tell like when people would talk that they were funny. But I never like watched specials. Or well, anything. that's the weird thing though because it's like I think we would all say we had the same comedy influences. Like I remember like the earliest specials I remember seeing when I was a little kid was just like what was on TV. And it would be like Dana Carvey, Bob Saget. And, like, yeah. Those guys are incredible, but that's not like the comedy of today by any means no. and then like other things that were informing it like you said like South Park the Comedy Central like yeah. I would watch any show on Comedy Central but then like it was a weird thing I remember right near the tail end of high school like um, Netflix was becoming big and then like Jeselnik had a special out like every there was just like mm-hmm. specials at our disposal point and click anytime we want and I was like just watching them as a fan and then you Sorry. realize like oh fuck like there's so much of this going on right now and it's constantly evolving. So like by the time we started doing it, like you said, like I was listening to a podcast for years. It's like, I wasn't even thinking about it from a performance standpoint. I was just listening to these guys as fans. Yeah. Yeah. And you realize like, wow, comedy is very big today, but it's totally different than it was when like we were watching like Dana Carvey and Bob Saget or even like what Eddie Murphy was doing in the 80s. 100%. Um, I, well, actually I did watch, I did watch Raw and Delirious. I saw those, but I always remember like everyone going crazy about Dane Cook and shit like that. Yeah. I, we were, that was Growing like, up, that was And that like was like thing. the bad time in comedy, I think. Like those guys are fine, but like it's funny to think about like when we were growing up, like I remember we would sit in like a kitchen at a family party and like someone would have like Jeff Dun- Dunham on with yeah. puppets <laughs> and I'm like they're like this is fucking hilarious the and I'm like yeah right and like that shit was okay but it's corny to think yeah. about now when you have like you know like Jeselnik or whoever your guys are getting up and doing a stand up special that could be like 
brilliant. You yeah. Know what I mean? It's like I always compare it kind of like to listening to music. It's like you might like country music. You might not, you know, but you might be obsessed with jazz or right. hip hop or something. You know what I mean? So it's like I was thinking, but I never listened to Dane Cook. I never did yeah. anything. I couldn't tell you a, off the top of my head. I couldn't tell you a Dane Cook bit. You know, no, I, mean, I never no, like but that guy was fucking selling he was, out the I, garden. And dude. I remember I remember when he was the biggest thing. Like, I remember, like, knowing he was a comedian and he was the biggest thing yeah. in the world. Yeah. Same. You know what my I mean? My cousins, like, loved him. Yeah, my I best friend, my buddy Matt, growing up, lived next door to me, was obsessed with him. You yeah. know? He didn't, it just, it just didn't interest me enough to be like, oh, I want to watch this. Yeah. I get that. But I like television. I like funny shit. I love Will Ferrell. I love oh, yeah. shit like yeah. that. You know what I that, mean? That's where, like, all my influences came. I mean... The amount of times I'd sit and watch Family Guy or South Park with like, my doubt, brother and the dad. Simpsons. Like, that was everything. You know, it's interesting, and we touched on this with Brett, is like we also were growing up at a time, too, when like Apatowian comedy and comedy movies in general existed. Like The 40-Year-Old Virgin was coming yeah. out and changing yeah. comedy. Super bad. Super Pineapple bad. Express, right. Step Brothers, yeah. like Farrell. Like, all these guys were crushed. Anchorman. And now those movies don't exist. No. Well, I was... To not really change the subject, but I was talking oh, about yeah. this the other day. Will Farrell, like that six or seven year run he had oh, my from God. like old school, old school all the way to like Talladega Nights and Step Brothers and everything in between oh, that. The other guys. Dude, Electric, dude. Absurd. That, like, you look at that, there's like seven or it, it was pretty much a movie like every eight months that was just a bang. A bang. Just killer. Dude, and be- the best part is to this day. When I'm back home and like I'm hanging with all my boys and we're like we want to watch some funny shit, yeah. we're always putting on the other guys. Totally, we're putting on old super school, bad, super yeah. bad. Like it's always a movie from that era of Will Ferrell and Apatow years. Because they just hit it at such else. a time where thing you could still do that yeah. crazy <laughs> shit and people are cool with it, and now it's like it just dude. doesn't happen. You know my buddies, I mean? we went the other night, dude. Thanksgiving, my buddy, you know Leo, dude. He threw on Step Brothers, dude, and uh, it was the scene where they're trying to sell the house, and he's just dressed as a Nazi. <laughs> yeah. this dude, fucking yeah. next to a dude, neighbor. That's is. funny because when you're a kid, I saw that in theaters. The yeah, hey, real, you don't dude. realize like the little <laughs> shits like that, and he's like the shit they say. Like now we're adults So we get it And he's yeah. like Hey neighbors Like this is a great neighborhood You're gonna Dude. love it And then he's dressed as a Nazi He's yeah. like If you need fertilizer <laughs> I got a lot of it like, It's so good dude yeah. It's like It's fucking timeless Yeah you know? It really dude, is we, I watched Step Brothers The day after Thanksgiving Yeah this it's year. so good dude it's I watched so Super good. Bad recently Just like the, the little best. things Like I don't wanna fucking Eat dessert alone Like fucking Steven Steven Glansberg, Glansberg Dude yeah. it's That's might be my I remember sneaking into that They wouldn't sell us tickets And I remember sneaking in And watching that movie In theaters And I walked in at the scene where uh, Jonah Hill as a kid was drawing dicks dude and I remember <laughs> seeing that as like a 14 13 year old kid I was like holy fucking sh-. like it was the hottest I was like pissing in my pants dude, it's the you know most See, like, that was the height of comedy films and that was when we were kids so that informs our comedy everything's so, so funny much right. now, yeah. you know what was also very big though that I was talking about it recently with my dad was we had a black did you guys remember black boxes yeah, yeah, yeah. So we had a black box in my house. Do you remember? That? I didn't. I didn't have one, but I know. A black box about. was like this is before like Comcast, and it was a pretty much an illegal cable box where you got oh, yeah, yeah, every pay per view, porno, like everything. But uh, movies. Yeah, but I remember the Playboy Channel was the Playboy Channel was awesome, dude. Like <laughs> eight, you know, I saw a lot of things way before I should have, but uh, <laughs> they used to have like these these interviews on there with these people, and they just like talk about shit. And I remember just laughing my balls off. It always like fucking Adi Lang would be on there, and they're like it, all the shit they were talking about at the time. I didn't really know what it was, but they were talking about coke and sex and hookers and these girls wearing no clothes. And I remember like I saw people being funny in like a thing. You know, it was right. like a early bubble where I was watching. I was like, oh, that's that's pretty funny. You know, like shit like that was very big to me as well. I totally get what you're saying because it's like translating like, oh, this person could go do something else in a totally different form and be funny. And I think that's like informed like what we did in high school. Like I would be like part of the TV program and they'd be like, Matt, you got to do a news show about like sports at our school. And mm-hmm. I would take it and just make it a fucking nonsense comedy show yeah. about sports. And like that's once again informs like kind of how you grow up and see like, what you can do with what you got. Yeah, I yeah, think right. the biggest thing, like, yeah, it's huge because, like, the comedy stuck out the most to me. I didn't know when they were talking about sex, like, as an eight year old, I didn't know what they were talking about specifically, but I could see the funny pots. You know mm-hmm. what I mean? Mm-hmm. So it's like 
I didn't know why it was funny, but I knew it was funny. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I, I get what you're saying. Exactly, you're yeah. understanding the punch, like the punchline just hit, but you don't get what the punchline exactly, is. Exactly, exactly. But, but yeah. you I got the rhythm. Yeah, and like, you know, and I remember Howard Stern and shit was on there. I remember yeah, seeing them right. ride fucking Sibians on Howard Stern, dude. And <laughs> yeah. I, was like, I was like, what the fuck is going on, dude? Dude, I remember the early days of YouTube, <laughs> yeah. I would like watch Howard Stern like prank call videos. Like, you know, when like someone would call in and be like, it's like a real news report and they'd be like, and the gust of wind came from a blast from Howard Stern's vagina, blah, blah, blah. <laughs> and, like, I didn't know what, like, that, like, the implication of, like, a queef was. But, like, I knew it was funny. I was like, something's not right here. And now you're, like, an adult. You're, like, that's fucking hilarious. Awesome. And then you see, like, the South Park quest. And then, yeah, you know, like, this. Oh, yeah. oh dude, South, South Park's Park. prime. Like, I yeah. had no idea what was going Great, on. I just yeah. loved it. Well, yeah. dude, Family Guy. Like, my, my art oh, teacher. the references? Shout out Mr. Marr, dude. You oh, know. Boy, like, dude. My art teacher used to always laugh in middle school because, like, he knew that, like, me and my few friends love Family Guy. And he's like, I think it's great because you guys probably don't even get not like you guys probably don't even understand 20 yeah. percent of the references they make but i laughed at every single sure. one growing up yeah. i thought it was great well that's just like another thing is like we were growing up with like non sequitur nonsense humor which was like you know back in the 80s it was like joke punchline you know what i mean mm-hmm. like that reagan's a real cunt ha 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 then like family guy would just cut to like 30 seconds of him trying to pick up a dead frog and you're like this is weird like we could do this shit you know what i mm-hmm. mean definitely very right, true the best so what does that leave us now? We're in present times. We're, we're friends with Ryan O'Toole. He's a big, uh, you know, stand-up comedy. Uh, we're looking up to him. Yeah, you're he, he look, he looking, he looking up to the same so guy fine. who's also paying five dollars and buying a drink with you at all these fucking open. <laughs> well, mics, that's dude. another cool thing that we really like, <laughs> fell in love with about stand-up is like after that first show, like, like we told you this already, but like working on film sets when you're an actor, it's like. Oh, this guy's already done the fucking pilot. Dude, actors are the fucking worst, oh, the bro. Worst. I, and I say this as someone who I, I love the same way I love the the art of stand up and shit. I love act I right. I love acting, but actors are the fucking dude. They're a bunch of cunts, dude. dude like, they're the worst. Yeah, I talent can't, in general. Just like, it's all competitive, it's and there's talent. no yeah. reason it should. No. Whether it's models, actors, just, Ugh. when you're the talent on a set, I think yeah. you just suck. They're the yeah. worst. Like, I don't. You know what I mean? They're the most annoying people. You yeah. know, and it's like I'm, I'm guilty of it myself at times. You of know course. what I mean? But it's like. I can't fucking stand them, dude. You know what I mean? I can't stand, like, the competitiveness. Dude, I will, I'm not going to be competitive in stand. The only person I'm going to be competitive with is myself. You know what I mean? Exactly. That's, that's, that's how it should be. Yeah. That's the point of the art. But it's form. like acting is just like, I'm like, oh my God, I can't stand you people, dude. Yeah. Like, get hit by a fucking car, dude. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so then we did that first show, and we're expecting all these guys, because a lot of great people were there that night, and you guys all crushed. This is at uh, the comedy okay. shop. Okay, yeah, yeah. And it was our first time doing stand up, and we went up to everyone after, like, hey, that's great fucking set funny that was the first time you did stand yeah, up we're expecting everyone to be like yeah go fuck yourself everyone's like oh thanks man like was that your first time like i remember you being super nice adam christopher like dean dave everyone's super nice and cool i'm like dude why is everyone like not being a dick to us like this is really weird so like that brought us back and it was just like you said like that great equalizer like i saw carney open up for tim dylan a year ago before <laughs> i even considered Connie. fucking stand up and then a year later i'm oh, like i'm not opening for him i'm doing the same mic as him that he has <laughs> totally. to buy a drink for so it's like that equalizer again where it's like we're all kind of in the same place like yeah obviously people have done it longer they know it better but like we're still doing the same yeah mic, that's which is yeah. awesome yeah it's, yeah. it's, it's such cool. a good yeah. environment to learn you know man, that's what i love man watching you go up watching leo go up like that like sb I, everyone, I, I, Dean, SB, yeah. I, like sitting through the mics and just watching everyone get after it i love yeah, that's that the best yeah dude, that's what everyone's love like why that. do you stick around i'm like i, I need dude. to fucking figure out yeah. how to do this dude, you, yeah. learn, you learn you learn so much from watching like I, i'm not i i'm guilty dude i don't watch enough comedy in person as i should like dude we i we can go to like some of the best comedy clubs in the world for free and it's like why am i not there every night well you dude know? we fucking we saw tim a couple weeks ago and we love tim dylan he's great you yeah, know it's cool but then like i was sitting there like enjoying it just like because he's a master and he's a crafter or whatever but like i wasn't laughing out loud and then the next night we're at like the comedy shop with like you or whoever and like sitting four feet away and i'm cracking up because it's like when you're there and you become friends with everyone and it's like you're just fucking making each other laugh in such a raw and intimate setting like it's, it's such a good yeah. place to be if you're trying to the become theater. a stand-up yeah the yeah. theater setting is strange yeah because you're just like ah oh, great i'm a thousand feet away from a guy surrounded by a bunch of jerk offs talking about how much they love joe rogan and like they're all cracking up about shit and i'm like dude like I'm fucking five feet away from Ryan O'Toole being like, hey, like, Matt, you look like a fucking idiot today. I'm like, yeah. I do look like a fucking yeah. idiot. You know what I mean? It's like, it's just, it's such a cool spot to be in. It's like, I'd rather go laugh at that right now than go pay like 
a thousand dollars to go see Sebastian at the yeah. garden. I know, know what you mean. And it's like, yeah. that's another thing I like a lot about stand up. where it's like, I also come, I always make fun of my, anyone I love and I'm comfortable with, I shit on, you Absolutely. know what I mean? I'm, I'm going to take every opportunity I get to say something. And in acting school, I hate it. Like, it, there's kids I could do it to, but it, like acting school, I'd say it. And it's like, again, they weren't American. It, culturally, we were so different. And I'd mm -hmm. say something to somebody, whether it be like some off color fucking joke, and they take it serious. I was like, dude, what the fuck is this? You know yeah. what I mean? That's, I think, where I would go crazy, where it's like, okay, if I can't even. Because I, I, the root of acting is like, listen, you take from real life experiences and you be fucking real. As much as it says, oh, be real acting, that's what it's supposed to be. And then when I see these cunts, even the ones that are fantastic at fucking acting, you can't make a goddamn joke about their fake titties or fucking light or whatever the <laughs> fuck they have in their goddamn face. It's like, well, what am I doing here? Right. You yeah. know? We had the exact same problem when we went to school together freshman oh, year in the city because well, it's like, yeah. we're from Jersey. We're five feet from the city. We grew up with all these people our whole life. All like, bus thing Yeah, is, life is breaking is balls. Like, yeah. That's yeah. how you show Absolutely. endearment. That's yes. how you make a joke. And then we're meeting kids from like, all over the world from fucking Montana, whatever. Yeah, yeah. We're yeah. Just like Don't even give balls. them that much credit as so much all over the world. Well, yeah, there was a fucking few from, from Florida. Places. You know what yeah. I mean? And it's just like we're like busting balls and they're like, dude, like, do, do you have a problem with me? Like, I'm so oh, sorry. Dude. They're like, dude, what yeah. the fuck yeah. are you like, talking about? We're, we're, we're showing like microaggressions. Like, yeah, <laughs> they made us sound like me and Joey were like fucking the sharks or the jets from West Side yeah. Story rolling in with leather jackets and chains. Like, we're just fucking making jokes. But oh. it's funny. Like, but I do get it, I guess, if you didn't grow up like that. I guess no, of course they, they have, a, they have like, a thin Whoa. skin. Like, yeah. We have thick skins because, yeah. like, course. busting balls is how you it's make a child we playground. Yeah, exactly. But we I also want to be like, just like we need to respect your pronouns. Respect oh, yeah, yeah. my ball busting. Exactly. Hundred percent. I'm with <laughs> yeah. you. You know, just do whatever the fuck you want. So what do we got next? You just got back from LA. What yeah, was that like? Was fucking sick, dude. Yeah. Uh, I went out there for the second time in fucking three months or something. Sorry, I keep fucking my fault. kicking you. Um, it was fucking awesome, dude. I love Los Angeles so much, dude. You were saying you could see yourself out there? Because I know a lot yeah, of people can. you can't. think you could live there? Yeah. Everyone keeps fucking asking me this. But put it this way. If I had to move there, I would not complain about moving there. But I think for now, I'm going to be bi-coastal in the sense where it's like, I'm going to go out every couple months. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. It's so fun there, dude. How yeah. would you compare the comedy scene dope. there to... New York. So it's like some people talk shit on it. Haven't yeah, you? everyone was before I went there in July, August. Everyone was like, uh, but I'm like, I need to go see for me. I'm, you know, it's like if someone tells me a restaurant's good, they tell me it's. I don't know until I fucking right. eat the goddamn food. Absolutely. You know what I mean? Yeah, absolutely. So I was like, I want to go out there, and I love it out there. It's much different in the fact the fact like now. One thing I will say is you do get a lot of people there where it's like they they're like. They do stand up because they fall and it's they do stand up just to do it, which I don't think there's anything wrong with, you know. But it's like there's a lot of people you can't really make fun of, and you know what I mean. It's like yeah, I was actually wondering how you're gonna fare out there because like not to talk shit on LA and just assume about them, but like LA's got that rap where it's like a bunch of fucking fake plastic pussies that are just there is, but there's also animals out there. Yeah. Like there's so many fucking amazing comedians. Like there's people that it's like they were saying shit to with well, the second they heard me open my mouth, it's just like Jesus Christ. Fucking Mark Wahlberg one, and it's like you know what I mean. It's like and it's yeah. like yeah, I'm gonna talk shit back, but it's like I respect that idea, yeah. that yeah. Uh, attitude. That. So it's like there's a lot of that. But as far as like going places and like I said, I mean I take the train everywhere here. I fucking like there you gotta drive a car and shit, and uh, it's I love it, dude. I love it. It's like definitely different in the energies and stuff like that. But I think it's I don't think it's worse or better, so okay. to say. I love, but I love New York though, where it's like I think I, like I got off the plane after L.A. I landed in Boston. It was like 30 degrees. And uh, I was like one in the morning. It was fucking cold and windy. <laughs> Excuse me. It was the day before Thanksgiving. And uh, that like aggression. I remember saying right when I got off, the f I called my buddy Tim. I was like, dude, I just want to drink beers and watch the Pats on Sunday. Like, <laughs> <laughs> I feel like it's in the air like that. But I feel like that's where my con like my shit comes from. You right. know what I mean? But that then LA, it's in the air. You're calm. Dude, I was out there. A couple people cans. yes dude a couple people said some shit to me in los angeles this was when i was out there in the summertime a couple people said some shit to me it was very passive aggressive where it's like if it was in new york it would have been a hundred percent a confrontation <laughs> yeah, i would have been like no we're gonna talk about what you just said mm -hmm. i remember being there and i was like i couldn't even find the place to get mad from because i was like dude it's been 85 degrees the last three weeks i've been here <laughs> You know what I mean? And it's like, you're just a fucking jealous person. You know what I mean? Yeah, like, yeah. it can't, it was one of those type things. 
And I was like, but the place is awesome. I love it. Yeah. A lot of like, hey, Ryan, uh, I think you should do this with your next joke. Some, oh, dude, it was that times 10. Some dude was like, he pretty much told me learn how to write a joke. And I was like, oh, I remember like laughing. And uh, I was with Espy and she flipped the fuck out on him. But I was like, I don't, <laughs> I was like, I don't even feel the, um, I was like, if the someone need to like stoop to, yeah, it yeah, I just didn't. I was like, this isn't. I'm yeah. like, dude, I'm at an open mic and I'm trying weird shit. You know yeah, what I mean? I'm yeah. not gonna. What am I gonna do? Remind this guy, <laughs> 55 years old and insecure. You know, it's like, oh, he's a 55. Yeah, year old. I was like, but I'm not gonna like attack some. I'm like, what I'm it, nothing good. But if that was in New York, there's not a doubt in my mind. I would be like, who the fuck do you think you're talking? Because <laughs> right. afterwards, when it happened, and I was like laying that night, I was like, who the fuck was that guy? <laughs> and there was a couple. I remember I went up on stage. And I was like, dude, it was in LA. It was 95 degrees in August. And I was just wearing a wife beater and a pair of basketball shorts, right? I'm not getting dressed up to do a fucking open. I don't think about what I'm looking like. to When I'm performing, I'm fucking performing. It comes from myself. You know what I mean? Of course, sometimes I want to look nice. You know, go up there naked with your yeah. cock. <laughs> hey, if guys, that, you got my cock yeah, out right if now. That's, if that. But I, but I, like, I wouldn't do that. But I, <laughs> I wouldn't. But I do think that is... An ultimate art. Like when people say you can't do stand up in shorts, shut the fuck up, dude. That's retarded. You're bro. not playing a character. You don't need a costume. A hundred percent. And it exactly. It's like if you want to wear, everyone always tells me that. I'm like, okay, well, no one's ever told me what I can and can't wear. I'm not going to worry about what some club that I'm not in yet and I might not be in in front of the four or five. I'm not worrying about that, right? And that's, but anyway, so I'm wearing like a wife beater and basketball short. Again, 90 degrees in Los Angeles. It's hot. I'm not wearing, I'm not getting dressed up to do a fucking open mic at three o'clock in the goddamn afternoon. The note <laughs> and this kid said something he's like i can't believe that guy just came up here where and it's like again if i was in new york i'd be like dude who the fuck you know but i'm not even gonna explain it to this fucking cunt you know what i mean and all the people who gave me shit there weren't funny you know yeah I well, would that's, well that, i was just about to ask and the, the people who came over after and they were, were the, the, good ones. the so the kids in la when both of those situations happened everyone who came over and was like dude that guy's just a dickhead that that girl's just jealous. Like who everyone I was like, oh, and then I saw those people perform and I was like, oh wait, those dudes who told me those people suck are like they deal with these scumbags on a regular basis. Yeah. And I was like, those dudes they get it. You know, yeah, like funny. how many shitty like four oh five jokes do you hear out there? Yeah. Yeah, cool. But you hear it's it's the same as like hearing shitty subway jokes. You know what I mean? <laughs> it's the same thing as hearing, Whoa, the fucking F train, you know what I mean? Yeah. It's like similar to that. Yeah, dude, I can imagine. Yeah, I don't know. LA is interesting. I mean, like you said, like if you have to go out there, why the fuck not? You know what dude, I mean, I mean me a million dollars for a Netflix movie. Like, I don't care. Dude, man. I was at the beach every single day. Like in yeah, the morning, I was great. just running and exercising. And I'm like, dude, I'm just going to chill. I saw dolphins. I never seen a dolphin in my life, <laughs> dude. I saw dolphins. I was like freaking out. I was like running. I was like, what the fuck was that, dude? And then I saw like four dolls. I was like, holy shit. I fucking sprinted down to the wall. Just watching them was like, a, <laughs> a, a, it was an experience. Because yeah. I never seen them in right. real life. Oh, yeah. For sure. That's totally fair. Yeah. Then fucking. you find out they're great whites. And then you do the, the great smile <laughs> like, Then you out yeah, there. Yeah. Sure. Blood coming out of your mouth. <laughs> All right. The thing about a red meat is you exactly. got the black eyes. It's like a dog's eye. Yeah. Know? It was similar. That was a pretty good <laughs> Robert Shaw, dude. It hurts my throat to do yeah. that. Yeah. <laughs> that guy, that was... That guy had 50 years of scotch and cigarettes to do that for You know him. he was only like 38 years old when he filmed that? <laughs> Get the fuck out <laughs> of here. Se- I'm dead serious, dude. <laughs> no, dude oh dead God. serious, dude. These are crazy people with diet. Like <laughs> he was such a then. booze. Yeah, he was such a booze bag. Dude. I think he That's died a couple insane. years after that. Yeah. Right? That's awesome. I was watching. He was in... Um, 38. <laughs> yeah, he was like... I think he was 38 or like 40. He looked like he was like 76. Literally. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, Fucking, what was I? Wa- I was watching uh, French Connection. You ever see the French yeah, yeah, Connection? Yeah. It was on when I was flying to LA. I was flipping through the channels and uh, French Connection was on. I was like, holy shit. I was I was pumped to watch that movie. I was like, dude, don't you love watching old oh, movies geez. like that? Because like a scene oh, geez, will happen shit. that you don't remember and it's like, oh wow, they used to be able to do that in movies. The 70s. Just like yeah. slap the shit out of a girl and oh, be like, yeah. now we're going to make love, sweetheart. Yeah. Just like the scenes. <laughs> You know, the scenes were so good. Like, old New York in movies is, like, a character mm. of its oh, own. Oh, dude, Taxi you know? Driver. Oh. Yeah. You ever guys watch Taxi Driver and always forget that there's that scene that Martin Scorsese's randomly in where he's like, <laughs> I think it was improv. He's like, have you ever seen what a 45 Magnum would do to a woman's pussy? Uh, yeah. That you should see. <laughs> oh, that yeah, you should yeah. see. A 45 Magnum. Marty was doing mad fucking chotch back in those oh, times. Yeah, he was just... 
He probably was coked out of his mind and decided to do that. The when day his, when his wife was up in the apartment with some N word, <laughs> <laughs> his words, not mine. You know, Dude, you could tell like he was like, I'm gonna, I'm gonna step in this scene, guys. Actually, yeah. like, I got something to say. Going to Big Marty. Um, the cameras are rolling though. That's fine. We're gonna. Yeah. Like, this is good. This is good. This is this is this is, this is helping the scene. The, How I, much fun do you think it was to do coke with like Scorsese, Spielberg, and George Lucas back then? Awesome, probably dude. crazy. And Especially when you didn't have getting hookers. So yeah, really. you didn't have to worry about fentanyl in it you know what i mean yeah, dude, Some, have you been fucking hearing about that shit and, well dude i've never i've never done cocaine in my life but now i know for a fact i never will because i'm not gonna fucking die i've heard a bunch of stories well there was all those comics in la a couple yeah. months ago and yeah. then like we've been hearing people like we kind of know like through the grapevine like you know they just did a line of coke and dead that's fucking nuts dude, dude is, do you think it's do you hear that conspiracy about like the comics in la is because of like slander against kobe that was like a fucking a what? take or something? Oh, yeah, I didn't hear that. I didn't know I was, that. I was like, "There's no way." I didn't. Yeah, I didn't hear that. Like some psyop, Kobe's family, like drugged people. Yeah, I mean, one of those dudes who passed away, uh, that guy Fu. I was going to his open mic when I was out there in the summertime. Oh, like, oh, it sucks. He was a. I didn't know him or anything, but I went to his mic probably four or five times. Jesus, like, funny dude. I was like, I heard that. I was like, God damn, man. That it's sucks. Fucked, man. I'm like fucking. I'm like in cocaine. I was like, that, but that's why I'll never. I gotta go. You can't do this shit now. I'm gonna, yeah. When when is it gonna be put in? I was laughing because I was telling my mother. I was like, I was telling my mother I wanted her to do mushrooms, and she's like, you don't know what's in that. You don't know what's. In. I'm like, well, I guess someone like my mother who doesn't do drugs or ever really did drugs. I'm like, she's just gonna think that shit's in everything. Right. You know what I mean? Of course. Yeah. Well, speaking about old movies where things you can't do anymore, you do. Hey, that's my wife. Let's talk some. Hey, that's my wife. <laughs> We got an exciting project that we're working on with the Ryan O'Toole. Fuck yeah, dude. So, have we already pitched this on the show? I think we've talked about it. I think we talked about it briefly an episode or two ago. Dude. Just when like, we were like talking about shit that was going on. Yeah, man. We're excited about it. Just because like, we were like fucking around with this idea for a while. And then I, I remember me and Joe, we were both talking about it. When we saw O'Toole perform the first couple of times, we're like, we're like dude, that imagine. guy's got to be yeah, in a like, fucking dude, play. Imagine him like, on stage. We didn't even know you were an actor yet. We were like, yeah. that guy would be a really fucking good yeah. actor. And we were like, oh my God, he's a fucking right, actor. Yeah. I'm interested. So like... Yeah, man, we've been writing. We got some fucking. We're gonna write a little bit after this, but Willie Shanahan, man, we got some interesting ideas I'm for you, su- dude. I'm super. I'm. I can't. I'm super excited. <laughs> it's just great because we're gonna say this now, and then by April we're gonna be putting this up for two days in New York. And then in August, we're going to look back at this and we'll have said that we're going to be going to Edinburgh. Yeah, let's do it, dude. Like dude so that's, we get to just, Scotland, that's right here, right now on record. We're going to yeah. get to Scott. We're going to get to fucking Scott. We were talking about it. We were saying like, yeah, like if you fucking hit like a pilot or something, go out to LA for a couple months or whatever. And then you come back to New York. I was like, you imagine like we go to Edinburgh. It does well. We get a fucking packed crowd every night. And some British cunt is like, oh, mate, I got like a million dollars. And I want you guys to tour this around London for the next six Let's months. I'd be like, oh, thank God. Yeah. <laughs> I'm so tired of my reality. Dude, yeah. that's the best way to put it. Let's you know what it. I mean? Thank God. I, you know, dude, I'm, I'm, in, I'm, I'm super excited. Fuck yeah. Yeah. When you guys told me about this, talk. I was like, yeah, you know. I oh, just dude, get... we've been coming. We were like, this guy, this idea is like half-baked. It's good. We can come up with something. And then we started actually writing it. And we were just sitting right there cracking up. Like, yeah. the idea of you just like, Pouring a glass of scotch to the brim and being like, I killed so many Japs in the war that it's like, and, just like, like, and you're like walking excited. around your office as it keeps overflowing, just like, like pour, <laughs> spilling all over the There's just so place. much good crack about to be. Uh, I love the crack. Pulled into. Yeah. yeah. Well, folks, what, what are we at right now? Where are we at? We just hit an hour. On Jesus wow. Christ. Wow. Goes by like water. Yeah. Goes by like water. Everyone will turn this one off 12 minutes in. Oh, yeah, no. I, I heard Once it. they hear that you almost got the Grand Slam, <laughs> <laughs> that you almost got the, the NBA the big, championship. The big A, yeah. The We're going to title dunk. this episode, Ryan O'Toole is Magic Johnson. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, and then we'll put the, the is not in parentheses. <laughs> but yeah. Let's just, for the record, I have no uh, immune disease. I have not, well... <laughs> yeah, nothing. nothing from the year of 2018 and I that you know of. Good, yeah. great, good to hear. That's great. Well, well folks, thank um, you all for listening. Well, yeah, first of all, throw the plugs like in. Where they plugs, find dude. the people? Where they find you? Uh, it's Ryan O'Toole. I T S Ryan. I'm gonna put this in here. If anyone can get me the username at Ryan O'Toole, just regular Ryan. He's a fucking. I, uh, 
I want to get Talk this shit on him. We don't care. Fuck yeah, he, uh, dude, I, I've offered him money to buy the fucking username. He's not a fucking artist. I, I think he he actually might be like a, an artist or something. But he doesn't a use painter. his yeah. He doesn't use his fucking Instagram. You know what mm. I mean? I've offered this fucking guy money. I've done. If, if someone can get me the username Ryan O'Toole, I will reward you greatly. Uh, but yeah, follow me. It's Ryan O'Toole. I T S Ryan O'Toole. Uh, fucking host a show selling shit on Amazon every Friday. Hell yeah. Uh, Amazon Live at Top Rated Club. Fucking Fuck, follow him. We didn't even go into that. Yeah. Well, let's do talk it about next. it real quick. Let's do it next. Let's deal with that. I, I, it's pretty much, I just like, Billy Mays was a big influence in my life. Uh, <laughs> he was, dude. Especially. Another guy that died of coke. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> wow. He did it before the fentanyl. Yeah, yeah. yeah. He, he was, just he was going like hard. a legitimate he's a pion- He's a pioneer, dude. Yeah, he's he a fun one. He is, dude. He, he's a, he's a, you know, he's a Hall of Famer, but, so it's pretty much just like that. I just sell ri- ri- cool shit shit a lot of ridiculous shit and uh things like that so uh i love doing shit like that so i'm on there every fr- i won't be on there next friday but the f- friday every friday at 10 o'clock i'm on look there. out for that yeah i post it on my instagram so fuck yeah all right well folks same as always find us where you find us and uh we'll see you next week real quick what does his f- sweatshirt say sexual what sexual nature oh, okay <laughs> sexual <laughs> nature you get, i want to make the same one i can't believe i just noticed that dude we should get one that says sexual predator too <laughs> <laughs> we heard around dude uh, that would fare well uh, thanks for having me this was dude, a ton of fucking thank you for being here first dude. of many i'm absolutely. sure absolutely folks we'll see you next week smoke them if you got them smoke them if you Peace got them um we got another sponsor Coming at you today, folks. Three, two, one, cigarettes. Guys, the Ghislaine Maxwell trial is going on right now, and I, you don't need to wait for the verdict. I could tell you from personal experience, she's a sex trafficker. Her and Epstein were trafficking children for sex. Yep. And you know what else a lot of people don't know? And actually, this is breaking news. Ryan O'Toole told us because he, he knew some people in on the circle. What were they smoking over there? I heard uh, Marlboro Reds, the old American <sighs> classic. Cowboy killers. The yep. Epstein trafficking ring and Ghislaine Maxwell were trafficking cowboy killers as well. They were smoking Marlboros. No wonder they were running an international sex ring, guys. Those things rot your brain. You know what doesn't rot your brain? What? Three, Three two, two, one, one reason, reason to, to smoke, smoke cigarettes. cigarettes. <laughs> Three, two, one cigarettes, folks. They're good. They're healthy. They're cool. They're clean, toasted cigarettes for kids and families. They're made with the finest Connecticut and Virginia-based tobacco. The crackle, the spark of a 321 cigarette could warm the house in the winter. And they have not been made on plantations where slaves were once employed. That's true. And that's progressive and cool. And you know what, Ryan? You were telling me this recently. You said when you were growing up on the streets of Southie, you and your bed, uh, your buddy Chucky, you, you guys, you were working at the time at MIT as a janitor, I right? Was, yes. And you guys only smoked cools with a K, K O O L, because you like the menthols. Those are fine. But then you said you, you tried a 3 two, one What happened to your life when you tried 3 two, well, I immediately uh, ended up, st- I, I was suspended from work at the time. I got a nice job. Uh, I had a family. Uh, my life just picked up immediately, you know. I went vegan uh, 100%. Didn't you say your respiratory system was better? You yeah, were running I mean, marathons? Oh, Boston Marathon every year, 26.2, baby. Hopkinson to the back bay. Yeah, dude. Wow. That's crazy. Yep. And do you still smoke three two one? Every single day. First thing I do, wake up in the morning, spark up a three two one. <sighs> Dude, you hear that? Like that's the type of thing you want to hear. You Fox know? or CNN will never air that either. No, yeah, right? oh, I'll tell oh, you of what. Of course not. And you know what Epstein killed himself with in his mouth when they found him hanging? What? A Marlboro. <laughs> not surprised. <laughs> Fuck, wow. And this is just only further evidence to say that maybe most child sex trafficking rings are also trafficking in other cigarette brands. Like, the evidence points towards that. There's nothing that points against that. Right. And yeah. we won't say it's fact. But I won't ever say anything like that. But but I, I would never say that. I would never say that. It's not the case. So, folks, you're going to go to www.321cigarettes.com slash crack, and you're going to use the code Galeen Maxwell Smokes Cowboy Killers for 50% off wow. a retail or wholesale box. A carton, folks. 12 carton, packs. right. 12 packs. And you know what? Since the Christmas time is coming here, if you prove that you have kids and that you will give them some cigarettes, we'll give you 75% off. Absolutely. And if you promise to carry them across state lines to get yourself in federal territory, uh, we'll put you on the show. Absolutely. Wow. You heard it here. for You can read an advertisement on this podcast just like I am right now. Ryan, on Christmas morning, what would you rather wake up to when you were a small child? Would you rather open a present under the tree and it be like the new Turbo Man dog? Boo. Or would you rather open a carton of three, two, one? Let's cigarettes? fucking go, dude. 
You heard it here for, first, folks. Smoke up, kids. Yeah. Smoke them if the you got them. back em. on heaters. You know what I had? You know what I got for cigarettes? You know what I got? A pack of smokes, all right? <laughs> you know what my dad said? Smoke up, Johnny. <laughs> <laughs> uh, three, two, one.